I just stood on a plug and genuinely my life like flashed before my eyes. That was like instant karma for filming this video and being mean before I'd even filmed it. But today I'm bringing you a list of books where the reading experience feels like stepping on a plug. It's painful, it's not good. This year I'm on track to read about like 180 books maybe. And I've read some absolute bangers. But I'm a Libra and so life is all about balance and I've also read some absolutely horrendous books. And today I wanted to focus on them because to my core I am a hater. These are books that ignite a fiery fury, like deep in my belly. They made me want to go back to the bookstore and not only ask for a refund but also compensation. This is time and energy I'll never get back and so now I'm here to help you avoid the same thing. Of course I'm going to do a whole separate video on the creme de la creme, the best books that I read this year, but today we're focusing on the shit de la shit, as in like if you used the pages of these books to wipe your backside, that would be a better use of them than reading them. I'm being so unnecessarily mean. I'm kidding, I don't wanna be harsh. I do a little bit. I, I hate these books, so here we are. Of the 180 books I read in 2022, these are the bottom 10%. These are the worst 18. The relegation zone, you know, the relegation being to hell where they belong. So welcome to the video and also I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. But before we dive into those books, I wanted to let you know that today's video is kindly brought to you by my absolute favorites book of the month. One thing about book of the month is that they have never let me down ever because this is a book subscription service where their team of experts vet literally hundreds of books each and every month and then pick their favorites. So they curate a list that they think is great and then you can pick one and it's delivered straight to your door in this magical blue box. Like when this arrives, it's a great day. Life just got better, you know? They really promote a lot of new and emerging authors, which is great because they're people that you maybe wouldn't have discovered. It's also risk-free because if none of the books tickle your pickle in a given month, you can just skip that month, any month, any time, and you won't be charged. Plus, you can get amazing prices on new release hardback fiction, including your first book for just $5. That's crazy. Use the code WONDER at bookofthemonth.com to get that offer. And to give you some inspiration, this is the book that I picked this month. This is Babel by R.F. Quang. And listen, everyone is talking about this book. This is like the book to read right now. And so I have to, I have to. So I'll let you know what I think about that one. But for now, let's get onto some books that I'm less excited about. <laughs> Starting with The 48 Laws of Power. Now I made a whole video on how terrible this book is and I'm alarmed at how many copies it's actually sold because this is a manifesto for misery. This is a book for people who need a hug and yet all it will give you is like several blows to the head. Fundamentally, this book is about how to be more powerful, but really, if you follow the instructions this book kind of gives you, you will end up so lonely because it tells you to like push everyone you love away, don't trust anyone, screw anyone over to get ahead. And it's kind of just like, for what? Like, why? What, what do you have to live for if you've ruined everything good in your life? Or for this abstract idea of power, you know? I really just think this is the horrible. The one good value this has is if you were writing a novel and you were trying to write like the most evil, insufferable, awful character, you could take any line from this book and use it as dialogue because this book is actually kind of just like pure evil. I could give you 48 reasons not to read this book, but we're gonna move on to the next one. Ah yeah, speaking of pure evil, this one is The Illicit Happiness of Other People. The only time I would ever recommend this book to you is if you're like looking at your window and you're thinking, God, I really would like to smash that. Because <laughs> this book will make you want to throw it across the room. It's so annoying. You could use this book if you want to sprinkle cheese because it's grating. My biggest issue with it, I guess, was that it was always punching down. Like the humor was very cheap. Always like picking on minority groups to laugh at. And I always think when comedians or authors do that, if you're always picking on those groups of people, maybe you're not actually funny. Maybe it's not funny at all. Maybe you should try just like being funnier. I don't know. The story was boring. I didn't care about this. There was no happiness of any people. Moving on to another book I didn't really care about is The Architecture of Happiness. Alain de Baton always takes so long to make a point. And then by the time he does, you're like, this is actually really naff. They're always very unsubstantiated. They always feel kind of obvious. And granted, I'm probably not the target audience for this particular book because I'm not an architect. And I would say there are a few interesting points and there are a few interesting pieces of information here, but I feel like if you're an architect, that would all be very basic. And if you're not an architect, you probably don't care. So I don't know who this is serving, really. Next we have She and Her Cat, which I think 
When I read the blurb, I thought it sounded so good. And so I had really high expectations. And then when those weren't met, I was like, got it. This is about a range of cats who all live in kind of like the same neighborhood. And through the stories of the cats, we learn about the inner lives of their owners who are all women. And this was fun for like five pages and then got old very, very quickly. Like a few pages in, I was like, okay, I feel like I've read this whole thing already. It's just basic. Anyway, this had so much potential and was just so underwhelming. There's really no substance here and the cats weren't interesting enough to kind of compensate for that. None of this is serious. None of this book is seriously worth your time. We follow this whiny girl who finds a way to position herself as a victim in like any scenario. And realistically, the people around her aren't actually always that bad. I was reading it and I was thinking, honestly, I don't think I'd like you. I don't think I'd want to be your friend. And that's not to say that every character has to be likable, but this character was definitely supposed to be. I felt like she was someone who would just be absolutely draining to spend any more than like 30 seconds with. <laughs> Especially there's this relationship between her and her sister. She like absolutely despises her sister. When most of the time her sister is like just trying to get her involved, trying to include her. She, her sister actually is like not the worst. She does end up doing some pretty bad stuff, but the main character is just so difficult to like that it's hard to care or root for her. And also, while this girl is just like whinging and whining for 250 pages, there's also this kind of like background plot about how there's been this huge crack in the sky that like no scientist can explain. It's kind of like Don't Look Up vibes, except if Don't Look Up had nothing interesting to say. Ragnarok is another book I thought had so much potential because I love mythological retellings and this is a retelling of kind of like Norse mythology. Except it's not really a retelling, it's more just like a telling. It just, it literally just regurgitates the story, but it's not interesting. I'm just not really sure what the point of this was, why it was necessary. Like if you're gonna retell something, don't make it worse, I don't know. Next we have, there's no such thing as an easy job. And the irony of me reading this as a full-time content creator is not lost on me, don't worry. This is a Japanese story about a woman who just like keeps getting jobs, something weird happens, she leaves the job. And it's just very formulaic. Each time you turn the page and she would start a new job, you're like, oh, here we go again. Super repetitive, quite monotonous. I honestly felt like I had a full-time job and it was reading this book because it was so laborious to get through. So yeah, great idea, bad execution. And honestly, execution sounds pretty good when you're reading these books because I, I was like, someone end it. Someone get me out of here. The next book is Isaac and the Egg. I received a proof copy of this book and it was like really, really hyped up. And it was so disappointing. This is a book about mental health, but with all the subtlety of a reversing dump truck. If that dump truck was also painted neon, and on fire. It's like the Matt Haig brand of mental health books. And it's about this man who is wanting to kill himself and then he hears this wailing egg. He takes the egg home. It turns into this kind of like big metaphor. The whole thing is annoying. I hated the writing style. It also tries to be kind of like experimental with the way that it positioned text on the page. Like when a doorbell would ring, it would be like ding dong <laughs> on the page. And it was stupid. It completely took me out of this narrative because suddenly it's like I'm reading a children's book. Like we went from the midnight library to the very hungry caterpillar real quick. I just found the whole thing jarring <laughs> and I'm sorry. Glory was not what the title suggests. It was nothing of the sort. There was nothing glorious about this. Glory was nominated for the 2022 Booker Prize. And I honestly think it's a case of like every single person who read this book on that judging committee was so confused by it that they were like, this must just be good. Like I must be stupid. I must not understand. And this must be great. And like I did a book club and we all said the same thing. Like, well, we just too dumb to understand this book. And it's like, no, the book is just bad. It's a satire about politics in Zimbabwe. And then what I think happened is that the author got to the end of the book, realized she'd written something that was kind of boring, then read Animal Farm and was like, perfect. I'll just make all of the characters animals. But it completely feels like it's something that was added in last minute. And it takes you completely out of the narrative. There's so many inconsistencies, but ironically, the author loves repetition and repeats the repetition so many times that it completely loses all value. There's one page that just says the word take like over and over again, take, 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 take. And you know what I do need to take? A break. I need to take 
a long walk in the park <laughs> and just not think about this book for a little while because all this book did was take took from my time took from my bank balance took from my energy i there was no glory here me earl and the dying girl i read this for a video where i read banned books and it was the only one where i was like you know what <laughs> maybe this should just stay banned not on account of anything other than it just being horrible to read the humor was hideous i think there's nothing worse than when you read a book that is meant to be funny and is trying to be funny and you don't click with it because that just becomes like so frustrating. I found this book really unnecessarily crass and I feel like also it had this real chip on its shoulder about what it wasn't. It spent so much time in the book telling you what this book isn't. It's like the anti The Fault in Our Stars. It's like this is not The Fault in Our Stars but it spends so much time doing that that it forgets to establish what it actually is. Like what do you do well? Quickly. Please, please enlighten me because I'm I'm confused. Oh, next I have two poetry collections, which I did a video on my second channel where I was like, I don't read enough poetry. I'm gonna go buy some poetry. And then I bought the first two things that I saw in the bookstore and they weren't good. <laughs> so that was a mistake. If anyone has some good poetry recommendations, please let me know. So we have So Tall It Ends in Heaven and also Dream of the Divided Field. And both were just like aggressively average, marvelously mediocre. There was just, Nothing memorable. I did not love these. Now, you knew this book was coming. You knew this was going to be in the video. You can take this off your bingo card. It is my sworn enemy, the Spanish love deception. The real deception here is when the TikTok girly said this book was good. Because you must be being paid. You must be. There is no other explanation for the number of people who actively promote this book. I don't know if we like were reading something different, but this is so terribly written. It's like trope roulette, everything is just in there completely for the sake of it, especially at the end where the author just starts chucking curveballs at you for like the last 10 pages for no reason. It's enemies to lovers, but when they're enemies, it's not believable. And when they're lovers, the bar is so low, it's in hell. So she's Spanish and this man does one Duolingo lesson. He can speak a couple words in Spanish and she's like, Oh my god, is this the love of my life? You hated him five minutes ago, sweetheart. Suddenly he's going, hola amigos, and you wanna have sex with him? Also, the author says that he has ocean eyes on like every other line. Well, okay, every other page maybe. And I'm like, we get it, Billie Eilish, his eyes are blue. He has literally no personality. This is predictable, it's basic. As you can tell, it makes me quite angry. <laughs> That's all I have to say. And then in a similar vein, the love hypothesis, which is so dumb. It's like this campus fake dating romance. I mean, realistically, has fake dating ever been done well? I am yet to read a good fake dating romance book. This one starts with this like non-consensual kiss, which they then joke about for the rest of the novel. Like, LOL, remember when you assaulted me? What kind of flirty foreplay is that? Like, they'll be having a conversation and then he'll just turn to her and be like, hey, I'd sue you. I'd get you kicked out of this university if you weren't so pretty. Like, I don't know about you, but I probably wouldn't be using sexual misconduct as like a pickup line. And that's not even the most outrageous thing that happens in this book. They like, so they're at university, he's a lecturer and she is a student. And at one point they go to a lecture together and oh, there's no seats. Tell me why she sat on his lap in the lecture. If you guys have been to university, you will know how absurd that is. Can you imagine that actually happening again? You'd have to go into hiding. Could not be me. You would not see me again if that happened. Again, my hypothesis is that this author has some dirt on some of you and she's forcing you to promote this book. Blackmail must be involved. I, I can't understand why other people are so enthusiastic about this. Anyway, next book is This One Sky Day. This was trying to do way too much and not doing any of it well. It's basically this world where each individual person has their own individual magical power and it's just really silly lots of wacky things happen all the women's vaginas just randomly fall out and it's just so dumb I just I didn't find this engaging at all it's like the pacing is so off because we linger on some things that aren't interesting for so long and then other things we just like completely brush over I was just like pick one thing and run with it I had the same issue with Tokyo Ueno station trying to do lots of things not doing any of them especially well you have this man it's kind of ambiguous at what point he's homeless and what point he's dead but he's sort of like haunting this station. He talks about some family tragedies that happened in his life, but you kind of get to the end of the book and you're like, I don't know what the point of that was. Looking for Bono. This is about a water crisis in Nigeria. And this one very ordinary man who kind of calls upon Bono to come and help Nigeria and then ends up being like, used and exploited by loads of media outlets, that kind of thing. And so this book is kind of a satire on the culture of celebrity aid and performative activism and that kind of thing. So there was potential there. 
There was potential, but again, all the characters are so annoying that it's just distracting. I wasn't looking for Bono, I was looking for the end. I was looking for this book to be over. And finally, to end this shit show, we have Afterlives. Honestly, some of these made me feel like I had descended down into hell and that was my afterlife. But I actually bought this book because the author won the Nobel Prize for literature. So I was excited by this and super intrigued. And yeah, I ended up just being so disappointed. It was the writing style for me. It was the complete opposite of what I enjoy because it was like telling us rather than showing us always. It's like you're being held at arm's length the whole time. It reads like a history textbook rather than a novel. And it's frustrating because the themes were really intriguing. So it's about a boy who was taken from his hometown by colonizers and then it comes back later on in life. But it was not pleasant to read, especially the dialogue, because instead of there being conversations, it's always like indirect. So it would always be like so-and-so told so-and-so that they were hungry. And it's just like unnecessarily wordy. It's too much. It's too, it's too much. Chill out. Don't do that. Give me something. So <laughs> those are the worst books that I read in this year of 2022. My good reviews, my positive reviews, my books that I loved are coming soon. So, you know, I'll be balancing it out. But thank you for watching this video. I hope that now you know some books that you can kind of avoid. I read them so you don't have to. And my next read is a book that you should read and that is Babel. And so thank you Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. If you want more regular updates from me, you can check out all my social media, my TikTok, everything will be linked down below. If you want, you can give this video a thumbs up since all of these books were a thumbs down and you can subscribe for more from me. Until next time, all the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you very soon. Bye bye!